Alright, well, here goes nothing. Night Limo, Paimon, the batch. You bet we are. Have you found anything new in the meantime? Mr. Caterpillar and I have been doing some research. Oh, and? We discovered that Samor doesn't in fact have an annihilation mode. Following data fragment sorting, this phrase was found to have been derived from the novel Prisoner 6 Overrun. In that book, the World Organization launched a mass annihilation agent to hunt the Chimera down. Wait, that stuff's not important at all. Apart from using our free time to go out and investigate, we've also read through the books collected here one more time. We couldn't make heads or tails of them at first, and even now, well, they certainly are well written. I don't know whose handwriting it is, or what scribe or copyist was hired, but their penmanship is clear and clearly beautiful. A master of calligraphy, if I ever saw one. Wait, so you were talking about the handwriting? Uh, Paimon's got a bad feeling about this already. Did you not find anything during this time, then? <laughs> Alright, sorry. I shan't jest any further. As you know, we told you all that we found the last the last time without holding anything back. Wait, wait. As you know, we told you all that we found. We told you all that we found last time without holding anything back. However, I fear that this time there are some clues hidden in details that we must rely on chance to reveal. Reveal their meaning, you mean? Indeed. For example, if no further revelations concerning the murder emerge, then the blood of the painting will the pain remain. Then the blood of the painting will always remain a red smear. Smear. Then what would this chance be, caterpillar? Well, why don't we do a quick recap of, of everything we've discovered? Let's make some deductions regarding what happened in the past that might give us the opportunity to fill in some gaps that can help us support or refute our views. It's a good idea. I've always felt like there's so much about this that's familiar, but I can't recall anything about it. Negative. I didn't give a continuous recount of the resources that I have, I have sorted. Ah, silly dog. Didn't you only recover your tree just name after talking to us about the matter? Agile noises. Meditative. I merely matched similar sounds during said interaction. There was no data loss involved. However, however, I must append that I too find that keyword searches make searching for entries more efficient. So what do you want to discuss? Well, for a bit of a warm-up, or a teaser, if you would, you may be referring to a heater. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. So, let's start off our deductions with something simple. What is the Mary Ann in the Anaposis, exactly? Huh? That's Mary Ann. Holds the greatest secret of all. I'm sure you can see that too. Let's get ourselves some armchairs. Maybe crack open a few beers. Oh wait, you can't drink yet. Yeah, I'm not of age, sorry. I can only drink my milk. Anyway, let us help you sort out your findings out. I'll start first. Well, the name Mary Ann itself is familiar to me. The name of the person I was meant to protect is Mary Ann, yes. But I have no data regarding the identity of the one who resides within the, an the Anaposis. We are missing context. I can only conclude 
based on the human's unmodified last pen, that they are not the same person. That would seem to be the case, huh? It's been a few hundred years after all. Well, as for Paimon, she ate chicken mushroom stew this morning. Does that count? Well, guess it's my turn. You mentioned before that you encountered Osinic creatures that had a great deal of character. One might say, personality, even. Yeah? And the precondition for such creatures and their characters is the same. That an intelligent Osinid had already understood their original forms beforehand. So, were you the one who willed those creatures into being now? Uh, don't you think that's kind of weird? You know, some unfamiliar friends play house with you for who knows how long and stuff? Well, I didn't do that. I actually had to get to know Petit Chou, Al, and the others first. Yeah. <sighs> These guys. Well then, in that case, let's see what we can deduce from the things we already know. Now let's begin. Huh? It's already starting? Yep. Um, brainstorm a bit and find a breakthrough. Um, about that. Anne is a small oceanid. She didn't create the oceanid creatures in Anaposis. Speaking of, just how do oceanids reproduce again? The name Mary Anne. Anne said the name sounded familiar. I should ask her about it. I should ask her about it. Should something come to mind? The Samora, she's someone that you must protect. Either way, ordinary humans don't live that long. It's been several hundred years, so they're probably not the same person, right? Okay. What Paimon ate this morning, which is totally irrelevant. Chicken mushroom stewer. At the risk of missing major plot twists or important foreshadowing, I don't think this is related to Anne's background either. And the oceanid, the oceanid creatures in Anaposis. Oceanids are sentient, sentient creatures you need to plantain, and they can create oceanid creatures through through mimicry and transformation. I remember all the strange and wonderful oceanic creatures we saw before we met Marianne. So... So this... Ants far too weak to control that whole realm, so she can't be the Oceanid behind it all. So she ate this? No, that can't be it. But it there are Oceanids, Oceanids in Anaposis. It's not Anne. It's definitely not Anne. I believe her. I believe her. She's also searching for answers. Marianne in Anaposis seems very mysterious. We once suspected that Anne was a character from her dreams. Associate with this. The enigmatic Marianne. Marianne, who has the same name as Simor's owner and who seems to know everything. Even if she's not an Oceanid, she's probably related to the Oceanid behind all this. Submit conclusion. That's enough for now. More than enough for a warm-up. Correct. The oddities in Anaposis are all point to the powers of the Oceanids. 
but this is not Miss Anne's doing. All this together means there's another Ocinid in Anaposis? This is what I suspect. An Ocinid with whom Mary Anne has a close relationship. Perhaps she could even be the princess herself. Lyris? Do you mean to say that Mary Anne may in fact be Princess Lyris? Yes, Lyris. The Red Empress of the North Central Zodo from back then. And the Red Empress who loves to take heads. The Red Empress? Such as, um. <laughs> is this another reference to Alice in Wonderland? I will take your head. <clears throat> take heads? I seem to have a vague recollection of something like that. Whoa! That's not a story about Lyris, rather, it's a fairy tale about someone named Marianne. Yes, the taking heads thing is just a metaphor. Right. Lyris is made of pure water and so has the ability to dissolve and extract people's wills. The Nazi Saint Risotto used her to extract the ego and become holy. Searching for the keyword Lyris has yielded relevant information in my indices. Talking that the Red Empress has reminded me of a few things about Marianne. Mold that over a while, a while first and speak to Miss Anne some more. See if the conclusion you reach awakens any new memories. But uh, yeah, let's talk to some more in Anne as well. Alright, Anne? <coughs> Agnimal, I've remembered the name Mary Anne. Uh, oh, to tell. It's familiar to me because it's from a ch children's story. The same one that the Red, Red Empress comes from. The female lead, Liddell, was mistaken for Marianne, the servant, and Marianne never appeared throughout the entire story. Maybe Marianne never really existed, except as a figment in someone's dreams. How do you know about this story, Ed? Yeah? And isn't that a good question? How do I know about it? The memory feels more vivid than those I have. Of the story of the evil dragon Narcissus. <clears throat> Alright, some more. Shall I summarize the entries regarding Lyris I possess for you, for you two? Thank you, please do. I'm within the standard citation format, constructing output to match format to re report to superiors. Lyris is a registered oceanid. She is not eligible to be stationed in the waters outside the Fontaine and has become a special source of information for the nation. She was appointed as the director of an orphanage to symbolize the love and affection of the previous hy Hydro Archon. She was appointed as the director of an orphanage to symbolize the love and affection of the previous hy Hydro Archon. So, Nigeria? Oh, Fusilor? I, mean, I don't know which one they're talking about right now. Um, <clears throat> the, orphanage's, the orphanage's affairs were mainly managed by its human vice director. An orphanage director? Then how is she connected to the Nos San Crisoldo? As director, Lyris was very affectionate towards the children and quite devoted to them. But her intelligence among oceanids was below average. Hey, Ratchish. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, my dude. How are you? Among oceanids was below average. She wasn't very good at working out the cause and effects of things, nor could she even count. As a result, she was not qualified to perform covert investigations. Ah, Sounds like a bit old chat mom can't count. True. Uh, you know, because cats can't count, so they keep up, they pick up their kittens one by one, and 
keep going back until they see there aren't any Tetans left. <laughs> Later, the orphanage was destroyed during the calamity, and official records of her stopped there. But <laughs> just stop there. Later, the orphanage was destroyed during the calamity, and official records of her stopped there. They say she failed to understand the link between the disaster, the orphans fleeing, and her own conduct. And so she wanders the ruins, drowning in guilt and expectation. I have an underwater locomotion module. Once Marianne and I dove down to the ruins of the orphanage, whose coordinates were the same as those of Anoposis. There we found an Oceanid swimming sadly in circles. I guess that's great. <laughs> when she next appeared in the wretches, she was a core member of the Nazis and Risotto, and the subject of a high priori priority arrest warrant. Oh, oh, but she doesn't. S oh, but she. she <laughs> this is Pyron speaking. Oh, but she doesn't seem like a bad person. Considering that she may be connected to Anne, she must have been tricked stream since it's going to be uh, the 4.4. I want to focus my attention on that part with Shenyuville and uh, Shaolin Village, and so on and so forth. But yeah, I guess we will see. Ah yes, there's another important piece of information worth noting. The orphanage's name was the Nazi Centro's Institute. Um, Nazi Centro's? These are all Marechal Phantom files that Mr. Alain Guillotin recorded for testing light sensitivity while designing me. The output is via my image text-to-speech module. According to eyewitnesses, testimony regarding who I suspect to be Lyris. There shouldn't be any problems. There shouldn't be any problems. I may have heard of this elsewhere, but it's worth mentioning again. Alain and Marianne were orphans in the care of the North Central Institute before the Marechaussee hunter Emmanuel Guillotin took them in. Alain and Marianne were orphans in the chair of the Nazi Centres Institute before the Marshal C. Hunter, Hunter Emmanuel Guillotin took them in. So Alain and Marianne were orphans. There was an, an orphanage that was called the Nazi Centres Institute. And Al, uh, Marianne and Alain were taken into care, I suppose, by the Marshall Hunter Emmanuel Guillotin. Alright, thank you some more. Don't mention it, noble sir. Wow. Okay, so this is going to be even more ridiculous by the day. Paimon feels like you've changed a lot since we met in the Fortress of Merapi, Caterpillar. Would a 5-year-old child and a 15-year-old teenager be the same? Perhaps returning here simply reminds me of the past, and of who I used to be. Time is frozen in the fortress, being locked up there for a day, or a hundred years. I'm afraid it made no difference to me. The noir is what made time flow for me. Watching her grow reminded me that time still passes, and life is still being born, shining brilliantly and being distinguished. And so, I, cha I changed as well. That said, my past self, the person I was before I met her, would certainly be more helpful to Anne and Samor in our current situation. That's true. Haha, <laughs> don't be like that, Paimon. Just think about it. Making up stories for Lenoir was nothing more and putting such ways of thinking to good use. Regardless, it has nothing to do with the current situation. You look like you still have questions, though. No? It's 
Since we have our own suspicions about Anne and Lyris' relationship, we have topics of discussion that can be used to refute or sustain those conjecture. How do Osinets reproduce? I'm sure you have friends more knowledgeable than I am, than I am regarding that. Perhaps you can even find scholars of natural philosophy who have dedicated this research to the question. Or you could have asked the Oceanids you know personally, but you asked me. Of course I know what you mean, so this is your speculation, I see. Hammond doesn't get it. When we exchanged information earlier, we all mentioned that Anne is the person Mary Anne's dream. Or perhaps she might be a manifestation made by Mary Anne, an Oceanid Oceanid. Oceanid, Oceanid, Oceanid? Why the repetition? I'm just trying to make it sound cuter. Apologies. Uh, perhaps my description was ill done. Still, can an Oceanid create an Oceanid creature version of an Oceanid? Wait, wait, let me... <coughs> let me read that again, just for a good measure. Still, can an Oceanid create an Oceanid creature version of an oceanid. Okay, so so it's about creation rather than rather than reproduction. Wow, that's deep. It's like asking if hard candies that can be used as a filler for another hard candy. So, what would you say to that? This question is really interesting, but Paimon's already hungry for answers. I suppose I'd have to say. Still, you may not realize just how deep this rabbit hole grows. So, let me explain. Let me explain. Do tell. You might be confused as to why there are Oceanic creatures with personalities in the Anaposis. If Oceanids can create Oceanid creatures, then can they create Oceanid humans or Oceanid Oceanids? Right, okay. Convention dictates that it's rare for Oceanids to be able to mimic a human, unless the human drowns in their arms, or the Oceanid has spent extensive time with a person and knows everything about them. And the Oceanid in question must also have tremendous wisdom and compassion. I'm afraid perhaps only one as powerful as Rodea could do it. Yeah. Wow. So that means... Idea... I... So that... <coughs> so that means that... So that means idea must be incredibly strong. So it's rare to mimic humans, but not impossible. Now, creating another Oceanid? That's different. <coughs> creating humans using human knowledge can only be achieved by gods. And the same applies to Oceanids creating Oceanids. It usually should be impossible, in this world at least. Unless... Unless this human or Osinid has already placed themselves above their own time and attempted such insanity. You mean they thought they had become a god? That's right. The followers blindly believe in their leaders, or who in turn blindly believe in themselves, giving rise to delirium and delusions. Again, with the word delusions. I can do what a god can do. Their deeds are not that great after all. A powerful belief is also a powerful will, and magic is a skill that molds reality to your will. Hmm. Perhaps the descendant hypothesis makes more sense. Perhaps, perhaps. 
It's possible and quite uh, quite understandable too. If nothing else, the Lyris I know doesn't have this kind of intelligence. No, which should be this crazy. I have some less mainstream ideas about how oceans reproduce, but they're not important, and I can discuss them later. Now, let's reorganize the information that everyone just recalled. This might take quite some time, and might be somewhat hard on our throats. <clears throat> I'm ready. So, regarding Alan's younger sister, Marianne, so... Okay, so... So Alan is Marianne's younger, uh, older brother. The Anaposis Marianne, the Red Eye Empress Lyris, and the Anne who's with us. What will our conclusion be? How will we sustain it and how shall we refute it? Everyone gathers. Is there anything else you feel we should add? As I mentioned before, Marianne is not only the princess in Anne's story, but she's also the person I must protect. So. She is the younger sister of Alan Giotta, the one who designed me for ACV-07. As, as for matters concerning me, I suppose you already know all about them, Magnamal. Speaking of which, didn't we also hear all sorts of stuff while we were in Alina's? Simor was also damaged during that time. How did it go? Do you think of anything? Uh, about the damage to Samor and Alinus. That's right. Samor was damaged inside Alinus, and the mayor's been taking care of him. To my shame, yes. Though I do not have such emotions, you can see it as me having lowered my assessment of myself. And according to Alinus, the battle that occurred within its body ended quite terribly. Evidently, that was the battle that damaged you, and it was an incredibly fierce one. But considering that you were damaged, then your master might have been... Common sense dictates that... <coughs> Common sense dictates that the fate of Marianne Guillotin, sister of Alain Guillotin, was most likely a grim one. But this world is full of tales of loyal knights, who it's changed their lives for a miracle. So you didn't grieve too much some more. Some more appears to have a data fragment sorting mode out of pure shock. But your master, Marianne, was an ordinary human being, wasn't she? And the time that has passed since then far surpasses the lifespan of any human. How did it go? Do you think of anything? The Red Empress Lyris. She was an important figure in the Nazi Sanctus Ordo, and she's also the over the other Osinid involved in the tale apart from Miss Anne. One of only two Osinids, and we also just read that we believe there must be an Osinid behind Anaposis. But her traits don't match those of the Mary Anne we encountered. Could it be that Lyris' imagination was behind everything, even me? That's unlikely. Zemmour mentioned that her intelligence was quite limited, so phantoms of this sort would be quite hard for her, similar to how an author would struggle to write a character more intelligent than themselves. In fairy tales, the kitten may dream of their living little master, but I fear such things don't happen much in real life. So, who is behind all this? And who in the world is that Marianne? Okay. Uh, the Ocinid Anne. Huh? What about me again? We once suspected that you might be the person that Marianne dreamed of. So, in your view, Mary Anne is the Osnid behind the curtain, yes? 
I... I don't know. <clears throat> well then, do you find the name Lyris familiar? She is, after all, the only oceanid involved in this part from yourself. If you mean the title, The Red Empress, then yes. I do have some impression of it. The Mary Ann in Anaposis. That makes her a prime suspect then. To be honest, were you using the process of elimination? You actually already guessed as much long ago. I didn't want to disrespect Anne though. Alright, but you do already have a version of the story in your heart. Your own interpretation, yes? If that's the case, then we should go find that Mary Ann and see for ourselves. Please permit me to change the topic for a moment. Does this mean that I shall no longer able to fulfill my orders to protect Mary Ann? Does this mean that I shall no longer be able to fulfill my orders to protect Marianne? We've worked out this much, and that's the only bits you care about? Hmm, it may be cruel, but from the moment we discovered that the Biotan siblings were from centuries ago, it was probably inevitable. Inevitable. Correction. So, the conclusion would be that it was my incompetence that exposed Marianne to danger. Do not blame yourself. You have fought to the point of destruction. You have done your part. There's no need to be so pessimistic either. Though that is an odd thing to say to be a machine. To a machine, yeah. Yeah, it's like pouring font to a sink and then saying sink or get fat if you keep drinking like this. Well, for a CV07. I can't believe you remember that. What is it, Mr. Caterpillar? Why use my official designation? We may not have reached any conclusions, but we now know what to do next. Look, there is a Mary Ann in Anoposis too, and she also has close links to the Nazi Saint Risotto. My long-term memory module confirms this. As such, there's no need to restore your logic module to factory settings yet. Let's take a step back. You can still go and find this Marianne. Hmm. Thank you for your logical troubleshooting and emotional debt and maintenance. I think what you said made sense. It is not yet time to admit defeat and restore myself to my initial settings in order to take on the mission. Yeah. That's right, you silly doggy. Let's leave things here for a while then. Once you're ready, we can continue. Hmm. Why don't we go find this Marianne? It's still that mystery before tackling the Nazi Saint Risotto issue. Ah, uh, the fairy tale water world? Hmm? I gather that some things happened over there then. Oh! Oh, uh. Oh. Just ran to immunity related issues, often due to Night Limel's hydro resonance, that's all. I won't feel like some extraordinary instinct awaiting in you after you made some more, Anne. Is it time to review responsibilities and apportion blame? I do not think I should be able account I should be held accountable. Or I can only override my protective prerogative in moments of great danger. Don't worry, Nightingale. We'll make we'll make Mary Ann something. Understand, maybe. So shall we go then? Head to the designated location. Yeah, I remember. I remember that place. All too well. Tissue, the kernel. Back 
back again. This time, we must... There we go. That's the spirit, Miss Anne. In truth, I must confess to being somewhat jealous of you. Hmm? Still will hold out hope of recovering your past. I've been searching for centuries, but I haven't found anything. So please, do your best for this old caterpillar's part as well, right? Figure your past out and try to accept your present self. Yep, I will. Head to the designated location. guys doing here again. Wait, isn't that Al's group? <laughs> yes, it is us. And you are? Nightly one Paimon. It's really good to see you. So good that I can't control myself anymore. Please dodge to the best of my of your ability. She asked us to send you a message. Now let me take out her handwritten letter in my hands. Such are, which are much like yours, yellow and white ones. <clears throat> I don't want to hear your stories. I prefer my version. Do I have to fight them? Shattered, torn to oblivion. Of course, huh? The bubble that was here before is drawn too. Yep. Well, it was Princess Lyris's magic. That's just how the story goes. Let me think of a way. Close your eyes, everyone. All right. So, Animal Illichul Road. Ready to party. <clears throat> At temp a temporary optical sensors shut down. Understood. They will be re reactivated on your command. Wait, why do we have to do that? The essence of a mime is pretense. The trade was that something is still here. And belief is the art of magic, the faith that there is many here. So let's close your eyes. Let's close our eyes. So Anne, begin imagining that that what it would like if that bubble was still here. Close your eyes and feel some sort of fluctuation. I prefer the story of the North Central's adventure team sitting down happily for tea time after their adventures ended. Wow, it really appeared. The old old told this tape call this step, the process of imagining something in such detail, Imogen. Let's go over and have a look. Yeah, before, I need to, um, I need to heal. No, my sword. The interest that's disappeared this time. And you know to make the you know to make the portal uh can you do your imagine thing on it? Alright, let me give it a try. You close your eyes and a lonesome silence silence troubles over you. But everyone's left. They won't come back no matter how long I wait. I don't it seems wait, why? How are we supposed to see Marianne then? 
I suspect that this is because the portal has lost meaning and this cannot be recreated. <coughs> from what you told me before, the entrance that was once placed here led to a story that has yet to be written. Now that she has said everything she wanted to, the story no longer has any meaning. Marianne is rejecting our, our answer, and is why the way in is shut. Does, does this mean we're going to return empty-handed? Does seem so. I wouldn't say we're completely out of luck. Did you notice something we didn't then? Did you, so did you not so notice something we didn't then, Night Limbo? I heard something while Anne was imaging. I didn't hear something then, so you couldn't hear too. Would that be Marianne's real thoughts? What did you two hear? Ah, mm, might be best not to discuss personal secrets here. The walls might have ears and all. Sit back before talking about this. You return with everyone to the Nazi St. Risotto. I did all of this for nothing. <coughs> Tell us what you heard. Perhaps the Hillage Show might hear something of that humans and alternates will not, just as how dogs and humans differ in that regard. I must correct your statement. My auditory components can indeed pick up higher and lower frequencies as compared to humans. However, I am not a dog. Moreover, a dog's lower frequency hearing is similar to that of a human. Is that so? Well, I was talking about real dogs, not you for a CP07. Haha, <laughs> silly dog. That said, I didn't think you would hear it too, Night Limo. I wonder if we'd hear we'd heard the same thing. But everyone's left. They won't come back, no matter how long I wait. It's like we heard the same thing. I suspect that this was the inner voice of Marianne. Did she say anything else? I'm not trying to invade anyone's privacy or anything, I just think that we are onto something here with, with you mentioning these words and all. Let me think, let me think. After that, I also heard something like, I prefer the story of the North Central's adventure team sitting down happily for tea time after the adventure has ended. And then, I don't want to hear your stories, I prefer my version. Have you noticed something off about this and all? Please state your case. Let's reach our own thoughts through first. Perhaps we really might be able to come to some conclusion, yeah. Talk to Caterpillar when you're ready. Lads and ladies around the world, thank you all for tuning in to yet another video regarding Genshin Impact. As you saw, um, in the last video, I finally was able to pull for Raiden Shodan that you're seeing on stream right now. And I'm really quite happy about that. She's really strong. Uh, she scales up on energy recharge, which is quite good in and of itself. Um, and it is amazing to see that uh, she has, well, She's not scared to change. Serves no purpose whatsoever. But yeah. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it on the side of YouTube. If you did, then make sure to leave a like on the video. Share with all your friends, family, relatives, dogs, cats, balls, or whatever, you, whoever you want to, ch to share it to. Uh, also, please consider subscribing. Uh, hit that subscribe button like you've never hit a subscribe button in your life. Also, uh, unlock, <laughs> unlock the notification bell so that you never miss another future video from me. And yeah, also comment down below. Uh, what were your f favorite moments, moments of this uh, video? What are you excited about? Do you have any recommendations? All of that stuff, I'll be 
happily read it, reading it in the comments. So thank you all for tuning in today, and I'll see you all, all the in the next video. Dear is but a Bye, guys. Constant motion.